We in there. Oh man, this has been a long awaited video. And uh, I see y'all hopping in the chat right now with the support. Thank you so much. I am eager to start talking about time code. So there's just, there's just a lot to cover. I'm hoping I could just keep this right under like 30 minutes, but y'all know I get long winded sometimes. So I'm doing my best to just get straight into it. And um, we're just gonna kick things off. So just a couple notes so that y'all know with what's going on in the live stream. I do want a chance to answer any additional questions that come up. Um, in this video, I plan to talk about just how to get started with time code, a few of the devices that I actually use to use time code, um, to generate time code with the camera. I've got a pocket sitting here, so I'll show some scenarios. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple common questions that I get, like mixed frame rates, things like that. And then I'm also going to show you how to record time code as an audio file and use DaVinci Resolve to basically do some magic and pull that time code from the audio file. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, let's just um, let's just dive straight into it. A uh, couple questions. Oh, one last thing. Almost forgot. Before uh, the end of the video, I'll do an open Q&A. But if y'all do have questions as I'm talking about some of this stuff, um, you can ask those questions. I'm going to periodically glance at the chat. But make sure you start with a Q so it's a highlight. Uh, if it's during the actual video of time code, can y'all just try to keep the questions relating to time code? And then at the very end, if it's like, you know, you want to know anything else about anything that we're doing or just got random questions, you can ask those as much as you want at the end of the video. But during the video, let's just keep it time code driven. So, um, oh, just this is a good question just to start it off. This will be saved on the channel. So after this video, I'll repost it and then I'll do some channel markers to hopefully try to make it easier to navigate uh, after the live stream. So let's dive straight into it. So first and foremost, the main thing that, you know, I'm hype about is the benefits that time code can do. There's a lot of, uh, I guess, conspiracies around. I wouldn't even say conspiracies. I, there's just a lot of people who aren't aware of it. And even for myself, when I first started looking into it, I was under the impression that this was like a lot more, uh, pro level type of stuff. And, and you definitely see this more on bigger sets and film shoots and stuff like that. But one man bands, especially wedding films, because you're running around and you're plugging in here and it, just the syncing process, the benefits of that by itself make using time code so much better. So uh, real quick, I got some stuff up. Hopefully this looks good on YouTube with the compression. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the BP TRX from Deity. This is my main recorder. Love this thing. Uh, but then the actual devices that I run time code with are these things, the UltraSync 1. Now, I do want to let y'all know these time code generators, all the ones that I'm going to talk about in this video, uh, they're not like specific. You can, there's a lot newer stuff that's out right now that can still do the same thing, like the Deity uh, TC1 that just came out. They also have like the tentacle syncs and things like that. But what we're going to cover in this video is just the general, like, what is time code? How do I use it? And then how do I use it in the edit? And so that's what we're going to cover in this one. So first off, let's just look at actually using the, the uh, UltraSync one. So I don't know if y'all can see this that good. Oops, let's cut this bad boy back on. So the main thing that, I, the reason why I have two of these is because these things run together. So depending on the type of system that you invest in, whether it be uh, UltraSync like this, whether it be the Deity uh, uh, TC1s, whether it's the Tentacle Syncs, they're all going to have, they're all going to be very similar in terms of how they connect to each other. I think I'm going to leave this on so that y'all can still see my face. So for example, the, the UltraSync ones, the way that these work is you have one set as the server. And I don't know if y'all can see that. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Kind of. So one is set as the server. And then as soon as I cut this one on, you notice that this one does not show in any time code, but we're already at 44 seconds on our time code. As soon as I cut this on, it auto connects to my master unit, which is this one. So all of my UltraSync ones, they all connect and run this time code and they automatically rejam. I forgot how many, I think it's like, it's something crazy, like a hundred times a minute or something like that. They just keep, they basically keep communicating. And when they fall out of range, then each individual unit becomes its own time code generator. But then when they're back within range, they keep rejamming. The whole purpose of that is to just prevent drift. We'll talk about that here in a second. But this is the UltraSync 1. Uh, as soon as I power this bad boy on, like I said, they start blinking in tandem. And we're showing the same time code on this one as on our main unit here. 
And so this is what I do at every wedding. I sit down, I cut on my ultra sync ones and I start running from there. There is a common question that I get in terms of how many of these things should you buy? So I'm trying to make sure that I explain it in a way that doesn't sound confusing. But think about it this way. Every camera that you have that you film with should have its own time code generator, which is this little box here, the actual time code device. Again, this could be the UltraSync 1, this could be the Tentacle Sync, this could be the Deity TC1. There, there's a lot of different manufacturers out there. This just happens to be the one that I've been using for the last year. Um, and so I do recommend them, but there are some cheaper options like the Deity TC1s that do the exact same thing, but are cheaper. So, um, but again, you want one of these for almost every camera that you have. The main reason, even my Black Magics, they have time code built in, but they're not consistent or accurate time code clocks. They need to be jammed with an accurate time code clock. Now, uh, trying to make sure I don't like go too far without explaining why. So with time code, the biggest thing that you'll encounter is drift. And if drift happens, then time code is basically useless. Essentially, you have to program your time code devices, this guy, with the camera so that when you go into the editor, it's syncing based on that time code clock, that number. So you have your hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. If any of that is off, then the audio or the clips that you're syncing it with won't align correctly. They may be one or two frames off. You'll often hear a lot of these devices say that you know they only experience one frame after 24 hours or you know uh, maybe less, things like that. In a perfect scenario, most of the time, you're never gonna have these things running for longer than 10 hours, 12 hours. Even my wedding days, I think the, the longest I've seen them was like 13 hours and that's because we started right away, cut these on, got everything jammed and then went the rest of the day that route. So on in reality, if you have a good time code generator, any of these devices, you can expect to have you know pretty much perfect time code the entire shoot. Got a couple questions. Um, do I need one time code device per audio or video equipment? So this is kind of tricky. This is a two part answer. Yes and no, it depends on the devices that you're running. Uh, for example, I have the Zoom F6 and the Zoom F6 I, it has a built in time code clock. I'm gonna show you how I use this with these guys here in a second. But if you have a device like, for example, the Pocket here that has a time code generator, but it's not accurate, then I need to have a device that's always jamming the camera. And that's why we keep one of these attached to the camera the entire day. So anytime we cut the camera on, it automatically rejams to the time code that's shown on our actual device here. So that's kind of a two part answer. Um, most of your audio equipment though is going to have a uh, a really good time code clock so you know like my zoom f6 for example could technically be the device that i use to jam sync all my other devices however you run into an issue of needing one of these to be ran on each camera and obviously you don't need a recorder for each camera you just need time code by itself so now that we got that i, I want to talk a little bit about I mainly wanted to bring up the Deity BPTRX because I think a lot of people could benefit from this device more so than having a standalone time code generator um, because they operate and do almost everything you need them to. So this guy, it is a Swiss army knife of like audio recorders. Uh, this device is a lapel mic. So it's your traditional wireless lapel where it will, you know, you can have it attached to your camera and it'll transmit and record internally. You can use it as a standalone time code recorder. Um, so in other words, you can, the way that I use them at weddings is I basically run this uh, as a recorder that's running time code. So when I get to you know the editing, I just have like one track of audio or it breaks into multiple files, but I have one device per person the entire wedding day and it's always recording. I never have to go back and trigger record and worry about it or anything like that. Um, and that's the way that I recommend it. But you can also use this as just a time code device like this UltraSync one. And that's why I really love these. So I wanna do a second and we're just gonna talk a little bit. I guess this is kind of a mini review on the Deity BP TRX. Um, the biggest thing and the biggest reason that I always recommend this is because of the benefits. It's a lot cheaper than the Tentacle Syncs. 
Um, the one advantage that I have noticed from the Tentacle Sync is that it does have 32-bit float, which is legendary. However, if you understand and experiment with your signal to noise ratio, um, that's probably gonna be the only like big term. I, I had to do a lot of research to really understand what signal to noise ratio was, uh, but we're not gonna get into it in this video. Uh, to make it quick though, when you understand that, then you basically program your gain levels on the recorder itself. And then you can um, utilize the analog limiter to help reduce that noise. So I don't know if y'all remember, I talked a bunch about the Sennheiser AVX and I'm pretty sure that that's an analog limiter, but I don't think they advertise it as an analog limiter, but it does pretty much the same thing. Once you hit a certain peak decibel on the recorder, the recorder suppresses the volume to prevent it from clipping. It's not as great, I would say, as the Sennheiser AVX, but it works fantastic. And I have, you know, had in, I haven't had any issues where uh, the audio was distorted and I couldn't use it. For the most part, you use it with a really good, high-quality mic, you're going to be good to go. So one thing I want to show you is the programming with the Deity and being able to use this as just your recorder as well as uh, a time code generator. We'll go down here to, I don't know if y'all how well y'all can see this screen, but hopefully you can see it okay. Um, so we'll go down, it, like I said, it has a bunch of different modes. And so I'm gonna show you all the modes on this bad boy real quick. So TX plus record means it's a transmitter and it will record at the same time. And Deity was able to get the license from Zaxcom to be able to use this in the US. So all that means is that I can basically have this attached to the groom and I can have the receiver attached to my camera. And in the event that these fall out of range or there's dropouts, the body pack that's on the groom is recording the audio at the same time. So I'm transmitting to my camera while also recording audio at the same time. And that's huge because a lot of you don't want to sync audio. Sometimes even myself, if I'm filming like a rehearsal dinner, it's a lot easier for me to just run it directly to the camera and have the audio file in one. That way I don't have to worry about syncing later. Uh, but in the event that there's dropouts, I always have a backup recording of the sound. So that's really good to know uh, and have uh, most of the devices that you'll find within this price range don't offer that. So that's huge. Uh, the other modes on here that I was mentioning, let's make sure you can see it. Boom, there we go. Uh, is the RX mode. So basically when you have two of them, you set one to transmit and you set the other one to record. Master TX. Um, IEM mode is pretty cool. Camera hop is also really cool. If you wanted to sync, maybe you wanted one sound to go to all four of your cameras. Uh, maybe you're not syncing time code, you're syncing based on waveform. But once you start using time code, I promise you, you probably won't ever use uh, waveform syncing again. Um, I have my auto lock set on, so it takes a minute to get back into it. And then record only, and then time code box. So if we go to time code box, it now, oops, it now turns it into, it turns it into a time code generator. So that right there, now this device is no longer a recorder. The input, if I plug a mic in here, it's not going to do anything. This is now a standalone uh, time code generator, and I can use this to jam sync my camera. I can use it to jam sync my Zoom F6 or anything like that. I'm using this just as a recorder. Most of the time, you'll want to use it as a recorder and a time code, which is record only. So when you're in record only mode, you can now jam sync time code, which I'm going to show you how to do this in a second, from any other device or output the time code from here and jam sync the other devices. Uh, when is the best time to use time code? Is there a routine that you use? This is a good question I can answer real quick. Um, I use time code pretty much all the time. So I don't film without using time code. If I'm ever using like audio or a second camera, I'm running time code because the, it's easier to just go in into an A folder and a B cam folder and then sync based on time, uh, based on time code or add that to your timeline based on time code than it is to try to figure out where the clips are, which recording goes with which audio track. You click two buttons, you're done. And we'll show you that here in a little bit. All right, so now let's talk about jam syncing the time code. Hopefully that helped you with the Deity. I know I didn't go into too many uh, details on that, but again, the Deity, in my opinion, if, you, if you're currently using like a Tascam DR10L, you basically want to replace all of those with this because this is going to get you better um, a better experience because of the time code. So you can run time code here 
and be able to use it as a recorder at the same time. So you don't have to worry about the, the task cams just offering the audio recorder and then the six decibel record limiter. This, you're gonna be in a safe boat. You do have to program the volume, um, but I would I definitely think this is a lot better buy than buying the, uh, the task cam. So if you have those, this is what you replace it with and then you can start utilizing time code. So now I wanna show you how to jam sync it and how I actually jam sync the time code from these. So these have been running this whole time. At this point, it doesn't matter which one I, uh, I actually go with. I can jam sync from this one, I can jam sync from this one. These two are always going to stay in sync because they are communicating with each other. So the way that I jam sync them, we're using a system called Linear Time Code, LTC. Uh, depending on the time code generator that you get, it may show, uh, it may only have one port. I believe the Deity uh, TC1s only have one output, much like the recorder. So if I plugged in a 3.5 millimeter cable here and plugged it into like my Zoom F6, it will jam sync the time code from there. So the first rule of thumb when jam syncing time code and getting started is that everything, I repeat, okay? If you don't take anything from this video, this is very important or time code's not gonna work for you. Every device that's running time code has to be set to the same frame rate. Keep in mind that and can y'all see me? Y'all can see me. Let me make it so that we got clear attention. Keep in mind that 23.976 and 24 frames per second are not the same, just like 29.97 and 30 frames per second. I'm only bringing this up because if you have like a cinema camera, like the Pocket 6Ks or, you know, FX6 or something like that, you may have the ability to film in both 23.976 or 24. And on my Pocket, for example, I actually have the ability to film in, if you guys can see this. So I have the ability to film in exactly 24 frames per second. If I wanted to, say I was filming with like, um, maybe I had a camera like a Sony a7S that was gonna be like a my B camera and it doesn't have the option of 24 flat, I would do 2398, which is gonna be the same as the 23976 that you get on like your, um, your Sony mirrorless and things like that. So just be mindful, make sure you pay attention. Each camera is different. Uh, sometimes the cameras will just say 24 frames per second, but you may wanna check the manual and make sure that it's actually recording at 24 frames or 23,976. It's very important that you do that because again, it won't sync properly if uh, the frame rates aren't set to be what they should be. So let me show you guys how we actually jam sync. Very, very simple. Once you got all your devices set. So for example, we go to the camera, I set my, my time code on the camera to 24 frames per second, or my frame rate to 24 frames per second. And then this device, I've already, I already have this set to 24 frames per second. Um, I'm not even sure if you guys can see this, but we can pull it up here and show you frames per second, 24. Not sure if you guys can see that, very small screen, but take my word for it. So with the Pocket 6Ks and most cameras, uh, if they have a dedicated time code input, all you have to do is plug the device into the camera. So we plug this into linear time code. It locks on one side. This is another big reason that I love. I love anything that locks because when you're running and gunning, things get pulled. And if this disconnects and you thought you were running time code and it wasn't, you're gonna be very upset when you get back to the studio and nothing's syncing. And trust me, that's happened to me. I forgot to plug this into the camera. And the first half of the wedding, my assistant's camera was not synced. It was just, it was a nightmare, but it is what it is. You get, you make that mistake once, I promise you won't ever do it again. So whatever time code system you get, make sure there's locking connections. As far as jam syncing, all I have to do, so we're running 15 minutes, 30, 37 seconds, and it's counting the frames. All I have to do to jam sync this camera, if you notice here, I'll actually show you. So this is the internal time code of the camera, and it's already running at two hours, six minutes, 31 seconds. As soon as I plug this into the headphone jack, you'll instantly see it update to the 15 minute time code. So here we go, we're gonna plug it in. Boom, there it is. 16 minutes, three seconds, and it's counting our frames, count, counting up. So this is as simple as it is with jam syncing time code. Now, just like I mentioned, as soon as I unplug this, once we cut the camera off for a long amount of time, it's gonna go back to its default time code. This is why you have to have a time code device for every single camera because most cam I don't think any camera has a built-in time code clock that will stay accurate. And most of the time, you're not gonna leave your camera running for 12 hours at a time. 
you're gonna take breaks, cut it off, rechange the battery. And so you have one of these devices that lasts 25 hours. I usually, I have a V-mount battery that I have Velcro on and we just Velcro it to the top of the battery. Or some of the systems have things like this where you can attach like a hot shoe and do it that way. So this is now running time code from the UltraSync One. And again, all I did was set my frame rate on the camera to match. And we'll talk about the mixed frame rates because I know a lot of you had questions about filming in 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, things like that. And so I do want to address that stuff here in a little bit. Um, and we'll do the same thing for, let me move this out the way, for the Zoom F6. When I'm ready to jam sync time code on this, uh, again, it's just as simple as plugging this device directly into the time code port on the side. So check with your recorder. Sometimes the recorders offer, they, ha they have different ports. Most audio recorders that support time code will probably have a dedicated time code port. Um, most cameras that support time code, like my Ursa Mini Pro has a dedicated time code uh, SDI port, but like the Pocket doesn't have an SDI port or a time code port. It utilizes the 3.5 millimeter mic jack as time code. So you'll wanna do some research, depending on the camera brand uh, that you have, you wanna figure out how it records time code. If it doesn't have like a time code port, uh, then most likely, most of the time that I've seen, it's always through the mic jack. So jam syncing this bad boy, again, as soon as I powered it on, it's running time code at two minutes. It always starts from zero. That's just the setting that I have set on the Zoom F6. Um, if I go into time code now, as soon as I plug this device in, you'll notice we're at, we're at right at two minutes there. It's gonna update to the time code on the UltraSync. There it is, and boom. And it also lets you know that it's recording external time code because now it shows EXT 24, which means we're at external time code, 24 frames per second, that's it. As soon as I unplug it, here's the cool thing. Because this audio recorder actually is a time code generator, it has a fully functional time code clock inside. As long as I don't power this off, it will maintain that time code the entire day. Um, I think it drops one frame after like 20 hours or something like that. Uh, don't quote me on that. But your normal you know, shoot, whether you're doing commercial, corporate work, or wedding, it's gonna stay accurate. When I show up to the weddings, I jam sync this, I throw a little MP battery on the back, and then I let it run the entire wedding day. After the speeches at the end of the night, that's when I power it off. Never had a problem with it uh, falling out of sync. So that's jam syncing this. I do wanna bring this up because I think this menu is a little bit easier to see. But I wanna actually show you the different frame options, frame rate options that you have in time code. Um, and so, oops, we'll go to the beginning. So you have your 23, 976 uh, non-drop and then 24 non-drop. Um, and the non-drop is where it drops a frame for, and I don't fully understand the difference. I did some tests and I couldn't figure out you know, I didn't notice anything change when I did like 30 uh, non-drop and then 30 drop frame. I didn't notice any tests or I didn't notice any differences. I think it has something to do with the broadcast systems. Um, so again, I'm not super technical on that. I'm only gonna talk about what I know, but these are the frame rate options that you have for running time code. 23,976, 24, 25 for PAL, 2997, uh, and then 30 frames per second. Um, you Again, you set your frame rates based on whatever frame rate you want your project to be at. For me, since I shoot on the Black Magic and it has a high frame rate option, I do 24 frames per second. And then when I wanna shoot in slow-mo, which we'll talk about here in a second, that's when I actually change the settings and go, uh, not the time code settings, I only change the actual camera settings to high frame rate and be able to record it there. So you see we're still running time code. The recorder's keeping the time code. And now the same thing on the Deity. The biggest difference with the Deity is if I plug this device in, it doesn't automatically register as time code. I wish it would. I wish it could just detect that that's time code coming in and would just jam sync, but you have to go into the settings on the Deity. So we'll go here. We'll go down to time code sync, time code setting, and then internal free run. Internal free run means it's always going to run time code. It's not going to start over. It's not going to wait for you to hit record. And then it starts running time code. There's different types of time code. I would always just recommend internal free run so that when you power the device on, it's always running time code. It's just counting up. Uh, you're not worried about like when you press record, that's when it jam syncs the time code. You don't want to do that. 
So back into back to Jam Sync, the the deity, time code sync, time code setting, and then you have your internal free run for your mode, uh, internal record run, and then internal um, real time clock run. I believe it's RTC, which is the real time. But we're gonna do real, uh, free run, and then again your frame rate is set to twenty four. And then down here you go to jam. The cool thing with the deity is it actually shows you the time code that's coming in when you're in the time code menu. So we're at 22 seconds or 22 minutes and it shows our 22 minute counting down here at the bottom. So as soon as I press jam, the internal time code on the deity is gonna update and I can unplug and it's gonna maintain that time code uh, for the uh, as long as we leave this device on. So boom, we just jammed it, 22 minutes, unplug it and it maintains that 22 minutes. So just like that, now I have all my devices. I have the camera, the recorder, and the body pack receiver all jam synced to time code. Take a quick second to look at the comments, see if y'all got anything. Uh, what's up, yo, what's up to everybody that just hopped on here? So I'm gonna keep it going. Um, can I use a time code box on my camera, Sony a6600 and a shotgun mic? If so, how's the best way to do this? So here's the cool thing with the deities, it actually comes with a device so that you can. I haven't tested it and I'm not sure if, you you basically have to split the recording. So it has to record in stereo because it does record a time code sound, which is crazy annoying. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that from your device um, or from DaVinci to be able to update time code. Essentially, the way that I look at it is if you're using something like a recorder that's running your audio, uh, and you're trying to jam sync your time code, then you usually don't need your shotgun mic for that. Um, and so I would say if that was the case, I would rather you have your audio on your, you know, on your talent, and then that's running time code, and then your camera is, you're sacrificing the shotgun mic audio for the time code input, which is gonna be much more, uh, I was getting ready to say much more better. Look at me. It's gonna be a lot better for when you get into post and start editing. Um, all right, so now let's go in and, or actually now I just need to tell you a little bit, this question I get a lot, which I just got this on my last time code video was if you wanna film in high frame rates, how to do it, um, will it affect the time code? Are you still able to sync and things like that? So there's a few things to remember with time code. The biggest thing that you want uh, to know is that time codes, the main benefit to me is for audio. If you're only using it to sync, um, your video clips, then I don't think it's as important that time code remains, as far as drift is concerned, I don't think it's as important. If you're using this for audio sake though, that's where it gets really, really crucial because if you're, if you're shooting in 60 frames per second, recording audio in 30 frames per second, and then editing in a 24 per, frames per second timeline, keep in mind that it's going to drop, it has to drop frames in order to play back properly. So the sacrifice on your audio file, you're not gonna, you can't drop your audio clips. You're not gonna have parts of your audio, you know, popping and cutting out. However, the footage, your 60 frames per second footage will be choppy. So what I've noticed, whenever I'm filming dialogue at 60 frames per second and I put that in my 24 frames per second timeline, it's synced, but if you watch closely, it's like slightly off. And it's not like a full frame, it's like, it's weird, it's, it's not, quite synced as it should be, as if it was a 24 frames per second clip with a 24 frames per second time code uh, audio uh, source. So the way around it that you, I mean, it still works. For the longest I was filming in 60 frames per second and I was using uh, time code to jam sync, you know, my audio devices and things like that. But the way that you wanna run it is you have to, it has to be an even multiple of the frame rate that you're gonna film in. For example, if you primarily film your weddings in 60 frames per second, then you're gonna to wanna to set your time code device to 30 frames per second. And then in post, that's gonna be two times the speed difference. So you can either interpret the footage to 30 frames per second or just drop that to a 30 frames per second timeline and the video file will play back at the right speed and your audio will still sync. It's still running the right time code. If you set your time code recorder to 24 frames per second and then you record at 60 frames per second, not, it, it's not gonna work. It, I literally will not jam sync. It will be so off that it'll drive you crazy. You'll have to go in and remap everything and it just won't work. So it has to be an even multiple. If you shoot 120 frames per second, 
then you can film at either 30 frames per second or uh, 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second would be five times slow-mo. Um, and so, you can, again, you can do the math or you can interpret the footage inside DaVinci or Premiere Pro, and then it'll play back at the right frame rate. Here's my best rule of thumb, though, and what I would recommend if you're going to utilize time code for audio. If it's just for your B-roll, like, for example, maybe you're doing, like, your bride portrait session, and you want to just be able to sync your A-cam with your assistance footage. That way, if you want to cut from, maybe he dips her, and you want to cut from the wide shot to the close-up without having to, you know, manually line them up, then that's perfectly fine. When you're recording audio, though, I would always recommend that that be at 24 frames per second if that's your delivery speed, which most of the time, everyone's editing in a 24 frames per second timeline. The reason I say that is you don't want to experience any type of delay or, you know, slight, if the, if the voice and the sound is slightly off, it's noticeable. Even my, my most recent wedding film, if you watch closely on the speeches, um, you can see it was like slightly off. It was, it wasn't a lot, but it was enough for where every time I saw it, I was like, man, it doesn't look like it's in sync. Um, but it is, it, it's, it's perfectly aligned in the editor. Like if I moved it a frame, it was way off. If I moved it back a frame, it was way off. But when I started using 24 frames per second footage and audio, everything lined up as it should be. So keep that in mind. If you want to film in slow motion, that should be your B-roll. That should be, you know, I, I always try to recommend, this is one thing that really pushed me more to, to just filming the entire wedding in 24 frames per second, was that since we're chasing so much sound bites and we never know when there's gonna be a conversation for, you know, speaking, I like to then toggle high frame rate on my camera so that I can have the option of still, you know, just bouncing back like, oh shoot, they're talking, turn off high frame rate and I'm back at 24 frames and I can film that. The way that I do that on the pockets is super sweet. And I believe most camera systems have something like this. I know on Sony, it's uh, called like slow and quick. Um, so I would just recommend checking out with your camera brand to see if they offer this. But for example, if I go into the menu settings here uh, under record, make sure you guys can see this pretty good. So my project frame rate is 24 frames per second. And then my off speed recording, which is my slow-mo, I can put this whatever I want, five frames per second, 50, 49, 48. Um, it, at this point, when I film in high frame rate, I'm not looking for an audio sync. I can still sync it to my other cameras, but I'm not looking for like dialogue for that particular shot. Um, and so like, for example, the bride walking down the aisle, if she walks down the aisle and I, I see an opportunity like, wow, this would be great. I can then toggle high frame rate, film that in slow-mo, and then once she gets to the front, I can toggle off the high frame rate by pressing this button, and now I'm back in 24 frames per second. And I would recommend seeing if, there, if there's a setting, like I said, I know most Sony cameras offer a slow and quick mode. Um, I would recommend figuring out if there's a way to set like a custom button so that you can toggle from 50 frames or 60 and back to your 24 frames per second by just clicking a button like that. So, Hopefully, this explained it. I know, I, I feel like, I, I, I am I under my 30 minutes? Oh, I'm close. I'm close to my 30 minutes. So hopefully, this explained it, and I was able to break it down the way that made sense. So now I want to show you the benefits if you have a camera that doesn't have time code, like the Sony a7S III, the Sony a7 IV. Um, there's a handful of cameras that don't support time code. Like, there's, like, literally not a time code clock in the camera, so it doesn't record time code. How do you work around that if you still want to benefit from using timecode? And the way you do that is you record timecode as an audio file into the camera. But the same settings have to apply. Your frame rate, your project frame rate has to be the same. So 23, uh, 9, 7, uh, 24, 30, so on, so on. It all has to match. Once you're in uh, inside DaVinci Resolve, this is why I promise you need to switch to DaVinci if you're not using it. So I'm going to pull this up so I can show you guys. Um, there we go. So this is from a wedding we did uh, not too long ago, and this was shot with a Sony a7 IV. And then this clip here, this is my audio file that was recorded directly into the Zoom F6. And so I don't wanna play the sound, but just take my word for it. The sound is very, very annoying. It is um, like a loud beeping noise. It's like, Bee! it's like crazy. And the, the reason that it does that is, I, I don't know, it, that's just the sound that it records as time code. But if you look in the inspector here uh, inside, let's go back to the clip. So if you look in the inspector, you see that the current time code on the clock or on the camera 
was just the time and it was set for 8 25 and then 30 um or eight hours 25 minutes 30 seconds and zero frames but the time code on my recorder was two hours three minutes 22 seconds and 11 frames uh that's the the beginning time code so what we did is the exact same thing so if you're recording time code and you're using uh, actual time code device like uh this here uh, let me make sure this is, there we go. All right, I was up actually. So if you're using the actual time code device like this, then you'll want to record, let me do it this way. You'll want to record your audio file. So you wanna make sure that your camera is recording the sound as if this was like a shotgun microphone or something like that. It will record that time code metadata as an audio file. And then we use this little trick in DaVinci to sync it. And so I wanna show you that real quick so that you guys see what I mean. Let me grab the keyboard. All right, so first and foremost, if I create a new timeline, we'll just call this test, boom. And if I drop both of these on the timeline, you see exactly what I mean. Like it's a very annoying sound that it makes. I'm not gonna play it because it's, I'm telling y'all, y'all will like hate me for it. But if I try to sync this, it's not gonna match because you know obviously they're, they're running two different time codes. So we'll delete that. In DaVinci Resolve, after you've recorded it, again, this can work with any camera. I've done this with a GoPro. I've done this, by the way, the GoPro Hero 10 because you get the little mod. I've done this with uh, my Sony ZV-1, um, this a7 IV, any camera, as long as it has a mic input, you can record time code into that camera as an audio file and then extract it in DaVinci Resolve um, as metadata. So it's pretty cool. So let me show you this again. Inside DaVinci, we're at eight hours, 25 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, zero frames. If I right click this clip and then I go to uh, update time code uh, from audio track, it's as simple as this, you click that button. DaVinci does some magic. If I click back on it, now we're showing the time code at two hours, two minutes, 27 seconds and zero frames. All that means is that this clip started recording before my audio track did. But now if I drop this on the, on the clip, Let's just do, let's just randomize it so you guys can see it working. So now if I hit uh, sync based on time code, auto align clips based on time code, done, just like that. I'm gonna delete the audio file or we'll just mute it so that you guys can hear it. Um, and now if I go to this clip, we'll see that the audio recorder from the Zoom F6 I is now like synced. Um, I I wasn't doing my really face. I didn't By the way, the bride is right. who's talking. Because then I, when I went to go get my nails done, she was like, you're, you're gonna get, get your area. spray tan after yeah. this? And I was like, shh. Yeah. So they're white. Like so I go in. It's just like that. And I, this is why time code is so important because no matter what camera you use, no matter what, you know, uh, if you're not using DaVinci, I don't know if this, best of my knowledge, this is only a DaVinci feature. I don't think there's something like this inside Premiere Pro or Final Cut. I could be wrong. If I am, after this video, y'all should definitely drop that in the comments and I'll pin it so that other people know. But in terms of like DaVinci Resolve, it's as simple as right clicking the clip updating the, the time code from the audio file and you're good to go. I did touch on this a little bit, but the way that I like to sync it, that makes it a lot easier. Just so you don't even have to wonder like, oh, where's the clip? Where's the audio track that goes with this clip? The way that I like to do it is if I right click and, and this again is inside DaVinci. I'm not sure if you can do this inside Premiere or Final Cut, but insert selected clips to timeline using time code. So basically what it's gonna do is drop that clip on the timeline exactly at two hours, three or two hours, two minutes, 27 seconds and zero frames. And then I do the exact same thing with the audio track. So I'll select a new layer to go a layer below, right click it, insert based on time code. And then it drops it, oh, it actually didn't drop it on the right layer for me. There we go. Now it drops that clip automatically right back to the timeline and they are synced. This is just, this just makes it easier so that you don't have to hunt if you had like a big folder of clips, um, you know, like maybe you had a whole folder or project that you're trying to show or sync the audio for, this makes it so much easier. You can dump all the footage on one timeline for like maybe your girl's prep or your guy's prep and then grab all the audio tracks and then drop them on the timeline. And then anything, any piece of your footage that lines up with the audio under it is automatically synced. You're good to go. And that just makes it extremely beneficial with using time code. It speeds up your editing makes things so much easier and faster for you. So that, uh, that is pretty much it. Oops, we're back at, oh, we don't need that. We don't need that. Up. 
apologize. So that's pretty much it. That is time code uh, in a glance. I, I hope I answered most of the questions with it. Uh, but now I want to see if there's any new questions that has surfaced that I can answer for y'all um, before we end the live stream. So um, I saw the media ghost hopped in here. Sup, bro? How many lapels are you usually running on a wedding day? So now I run, I think we, we're at 14. I have 14 of these Deity BP TRXs. And again, I, I buy these over the tentacle sinks because the cost. These are only 250. They offer a lot more functionality um, than the tentacle sinks. They also have a lot longer battery life. So these things last like 25 hours as a recorder. And I believe the tentacle sinks only last, I want to say eight hours. It might be, it might be nine hours. Um, there's been weddings where I've had these running for like 12 to 13 hours. And so I needed a device that I didn't have to worry about would actually die during the wedding day. And these things last pretty much all day. Um, does it work? Does it work if you use the waveform? Sorry for my English. So are you referring to Mike? I think you're talking about if, um, if the time code works based on wave waveform. Time code basically replaces the need to sync based on waveform. Um, time code is going to use the actual time clock on both devices, whether it be the actual time code generator, whatever is jam synced all your devices, it's going to use this clock to program um, or to sync all the files in the editor. And I can even pull up, I should probably do that. I can even pull up a bigger project just to give you an example of like how fast this actually works. Um, so I'm gonna do that while I'm looking at the at the comments here come in. I bought four of those and have been really happy with them. Blue Jay, that's what I like to hear. The the deities are really clutch. They they have another device that's out called the DED TC1, and that's an actual time code generator. Um, so if you're if you're looking to invest in a time code system and you want to just know all the things that you need to get started, this is kind of like an example of how or maybe a, a kit recommendation. This is what you need to buy. So you need one time code generator for every camera. So that can be the DD TC1, that can be the UltraSync 1, uh, whatever it is, you need one per camera. So if you have two cameras, at a minimum, you're gonna need two of these. If you have five cameras like me, you need five of them. So it just depends on how many cameras you're running because each, each camera, regardless, is going to need its own time code generator. Then after that, you want to start making sure all of your audio devices support time code. So that's where having things like the Deity um, BPTRX comes in handy because this device is a time code recorder or I can use it as a wireless transmitter, but it's still running time code. So even though I can use this as a standalone recorder or uh, a transmitter receiver, I'm always going to have the, the uh, functionality of syncing based on time code. So this will essentially replace like your Tascam DR10Ls, your Zoom F2s, things like that. This becomes that one device that does it all that also supports time code. That goes the same for like your recorder. So depending on the recorder that you have, you want to make sure that it supports time code because if as long as your devices all support time code, you're going to be able to sync this way and make it extremely easy in post. So your recorder needs to support it. Your wireless body packs, your lapels need to support it. And again, I just showed you if your camera doesn't support time code, you can still, the workaround is by actually utilizing uh, the audio file and using DaVinci Resolve to update that. Now, I have heard that Tentacle Sync has a program that you can use the tentacles and then you offload the footage into the tentacle software and then it does the same thing that DaVinci does. It kind of updates it for you. And then you're now, you can put that into any editor. I haven't tested it and I don't know anything about it. So, um, but I have heard that that is an option. Someone sent that to me and was like, hey, this is how I've been doing it. It's just, it adds an extra step to getting in the editor. So completely up to you. I would recommend the Deities TC ones. Uh, you prefer the Rode Link Lives over the higher end Deity Lives with the W Live Pro. So, um, no flavor. This is actually a good question. So I use the Sennheiser MKE twos, uh, for my mics, my, I guess my expendables, the ones that I put on like my bridal party members, um, just because of the sake of like, if I, their sound bites in, in, I guess in the sense of like the importance, I put like my bridegroom, parents and officiant, and then anyone else that I mic up gets one of the road mics because they are a lot cheaper if they break. Um, 
I like the sound quality of the Rode, Rode Link Lavs over the Deity mics. I have t tested all of them, even the W Lav Pro. And um, th those are, I, I just don't like them. They, there's a lot of, and I, it could be, it could have been like the recorders I was using, or maybe I didn't have the settings right on here, but there's there's a lot of like low noise for, um, like that, you know, weird hissing. Uh, and so I ever since using like my, you know, my Rode Lynx or my um, Sennheiser MKE-2s, I don't notice that. And so I just switched out from using them. Like I have a handful of them. If y'all want them, I've got what, 14 mics? I have like 14 of these. DDW lives. If you guys just need one, just to have one, like drop me a comment and you can have them because I won't use them. But I don't recommend them. That if you use them and you're like, man, this audio sounds horrible. That's not on me because I don't recommend them. I'm not. I don't recommend the DD lapels. I recommend the DD recorders. This, yes, the lapels. No, can't recommend it. Can't recommend it. Um, so I want to show you this real quick before we hop off here. Um, and that's just like, I just, I love using time code. So I got to show you guys like some more benefits to really convince you on like the pro reasons why you, why you got to have it. Um, let me pull this up here. One second. You can do any project, honestly. We'll do this. We'll do guys, guys prep for this one. I'm going to show you with like a handful of clips, like a lot of clips. So. Tentacle Sync runs up to 35 hours operating time. All right, cool. I didn't know. I swear I thought I looked it up, and I'm pretty sure I thought I saw somewhere that it was. Or it might have been the recorders. Check out the Tentacle, because the Sync Track E's, I believe, are or the, the, Centic, the Tentacle Sync E is just the time code device. And then the Track E, I thought, was the time code recorder, the 32-bit recorder. And I think the time code recorder didn't last that long. Um, so double check me on that, Splendid Films. I, I'm pretty sure, I think that the time code recorders themselves, the time code generators, the, the Sync E, I believe you're right, 35 hours. But the Track E recorders, I think are a lot less than that. Um, but I could be wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So, uh, oh, here we got another one. So have you ever done 35 hour wedding? <laughs> I max out at 10. Yeah, yeah. So Blue Jay, that's the benefit. Like most of the time code recorders, they last a lot longer than anyone would actually be filming on set. So the the battery life of these things is like 25 hours. And the most that I've filmed is like 10 hours at a wedding, 10, 12 hours tops. So you're typically good. Okay, perfect. So he did correct it. So, um, or she, I'm not sure if this is the guy or girl I'm talking to, but um, the uh, the Tentacle Sync, Sync E, which it, or the Track E, which is the recorder, the 32-bit recorder, it actually only lasts up to 10 hours. So for me, that was too risky because sometimes I show up, you know, two to three hours before the wedding or at least two hours. I'm usually about two hours early to my contract time and I turn everything on. I get everything jam synced. That way throughout the day, if I need one, I don't have to rejam it. It's already ready to go. So all of them, all 14 of my recorders are running from the minute I get there until the send off, um, until I'm packing up to go home. So I needed one like the DD T the DD B BP TRX. Man, these names are starting to really throw me off. But this this lasts uh, 21 hours as a recorder, a time code recorder. So that to me was the win, and it's about 125 dollars. I think 130 dollars cheaper than the Tentacle Sync E. Um, all right, so I have another project up that I want to show y'all just like really fast, like how quick it is to sync, and I'm only gonna do it with. Um, like a few of the audio tracks, like, so just so that you guys can see it. So let's go back into DaVinci. All right. So this is DaVinci again. Uh, we can turn, I don't need my, my face on there. Boom. All right. So I wanted to show you a real fast scenario. If I wanted to sync, this is a guy's prep scene. Say I wanted to sync the, all these clips on my timeline. The way that I do it with time code is I click all the clips, which I might, Oh, there we go. So I click all the clips. In my new timeline, I click all the clips, right click, and then insert selected clips to timeline using time code. This is literally how I edit pretty much every wedding. I edit every wedding this way just to make things simple. So what it did is it put all the footage that I filmed from my A camera for the guy's prep on the timeline based on the time code. So now all I have to do, I don't, I don't care about the scratch audio because I, everybody that's in this scene is mic'd up. 
So all I have to do now for my B camera is the exact same thing. I take my B camera angle, I click all the footage, and then I'm gonna change to video track two so that it drops the footage to track two. And then the exact same thing, insert based on time code, and it did the exact same thing. So we zoom out here. Boom. So now, if you notice, we've got the, some clips are stacked on top of each other, and all that tells me is that those are A cam and B cam angles. So I can literally go from here now and multi cam cut this edit. So I can I can literally start editing this just this section here as a scene because I have an A angle and a B angle, um, and that works for any part that has a stack clip. Um, I know it kind of looks confusing, but like it does make it so much easier because of how many people are mic'd. And then I do the exact same thing. So now I have all the clips on the timeline based on time code. So now what I'll do is I'll start naming like my audio tracks, right? Let's let's name this the groom. And then the other audio track I have is PJ. So we can name this best man. Boom, just like that. So now I'll do the exact same thing with my audio. All I do is go to the A, to the track one. I'm gonna grab my groom's audio, grab all of his audio tracks. I don't care what it is, just grab all of them, right click insert to timeline using time code and boom done it's synced just like that if i play something let's see if i can find a, a section that has the groom's face in it yeah so uh i think our hotel is around oh i moved i want you guys to see that so synced. i want him to just do his other thing don't own thing I just like that i just synced two cameras and all of the groom's audio in like what three minutes um, because I use time code. And so anything that doesn't have footage like this stuff, I just delete it off my timeline. But all of this footage is perfectly synced to the groom audio. So anytime I have him in the shot, I know that his audio is already ready to go. And I do the same thing for the next person that's mic'd up. So we'll go to the best man, we'll click the audio track two, grab all of his footage. Oops. And then right click, insert based on time code. And now all of his footage is now synced as well. We'll go back here and we're good to go. So now all of all of PJ's audio is synced. If you have anything of him talking, I can show you. Oh, that was him, I think, there. So we'll mute the groom's audio, best man audio right here. This is where we were. <laughs> hey, I mean, it was like, it was like. Just like that, like this is how fast time code works. And you, you can do this with however many recorders you have. Literally, I do it scene-based, so I do like my guys prep, I'll do all the guys stuff, and then I kind of edit a scene from that. I do the same thing for my girls prep, uh, for my pre-ceremony, for the ceremony, for uh, the, I, get, I call it post-ceremony, but it's the little moment after the ceremony where the bridal party kind of huddles up and they're like, oh my God, y'all got married, and everybody dapping each other and all that. I, I basically edit the entire wedding day in scenes this way I can do exactly what I'm doing here and sync all the audio. So whoever's a part of that scene, if it's the bridal party, if it's just the guys, if it's the groom and his dad, I'm gonna put that audio in that scene and just build a timeline from that, condense it down to something that's an actual story and then that's good to go. So it seems confusing at first, but I promise you, once you start using time code, it speeds things up like crazy. Um, but that's it, that's all I got y'all. I hope this video helped y'all out. Um, last few questions and then we'll hop off here. Um, BPTRX, do you mess with the mic settings or just turn it on, jam, and start recording? So Blue Jay, the BPTRX is not a 32-bit float recorder. So I would Google, I would look on YouTube. There's a, there's a couple people, and maybe after this video uploads, I'll leave a link in the description. But there's a guy that really, really explains signal to noise ratio. And that's very, very important when setting levels. I, when I first got these and I was testing it out, I was like, man, these things sound horrible. And then I started doing some research and digging and actually Andrew with Deity Microphone sent me a message, offered some tips. And he also explained like, you really need to experiment with your signal to noise ratio. And basically that's gonna be like, how loud is the audio that you want from the audio that's in the environment? And so for me, I'm gonna, I can give you my numbers using uh, each microphone is different, but when I use the Rode, Rode Links, I have the gain setting on this to about plus six dB. The Rode mics have a much more sensitive pickup pattern, um, and it always depends on the lapel that you plug in, so you have to run tests. Uh, but my Sennheiser MKEs, I have set to about plus 21 dB. 
Uh, and that's because the, they have a much lower pickup pattern. So it, it really just depends on the microphone that you're using, but these are not just a plug and play. You, you really have to set your levels. Otherwise you can, you can pretty much mess up your audio the entire day. So um, experiment with the lapels that you have. If you're gonna use the lapels that came with it, I was running them around plus 20 dB or 21 dB. But to me, I could never get the sound quality to be usable. I, I didn't like them. I like the sound. If you're gonna go with a cheaper lapel mic, you can buy this with a Rode Rodelink mic. And I think that's like a lethal combo um, that I can recommend confidently. Uh, would the Timeco audio device work for the Nikon cameras? So I believe the Z6 and like, um, I believe the Z6 has time code. I would do, uh, I would check out BNH's website because they do a really good job at listing like all the features if it supports time code. Um, if it doesn't, I don't know if you missed this part, but if it doesn't, you can always record time code as an audio file and then extract that audio file inside DaVinci Resolve if you edit with DaVinci. I'm not sure of any other softwares that do this, um, but that reason alone is worth switching to DaVinci. I'm gonna just keep pitching it because I think it's way better than Premiere. I'm just, boom, I just threw it out there. It is what it is. Uh, what's up, Justin? Great stream, been looking for the setup for films. Uh, these wireless go-tos are not cutting it for weddings. Thanks for the Sony demo, now I know it works. Yes, Sean. Uh, also, the wireless go-tos are great mics. I think they're they're decent. Um, they're not they're not a pro microphone. Like you're doing something like a wedding, I consider to be pro work. Um, I I don't recommend the wireless go twos for pro level uh, audio. They are they're great entry level audio devices, but the sound quality from the built in mic to me is like not even worth it. And then they don't have a locking mic connection, which I think if you're gonna make an audio device, it needs to have it has to have a locking mic connection right here. So when I put my mic in here, it threads on and you can't un unplug it. If you're filming a wedding and you have a mic in here and the groom moves a certain way and then it unplugs and your audio is ruined, that's it. It's gone for good. Like I, I don't trust devices that don't have locking mic connect. I don't trust devices that don't have locking connections. Like my, my time code devices, locking connection, the audio recorder, locking connection. Like I trust wholeheartedly that this is not gonna come undone throughout the wedding day because you got a lot of things that you're worried about. So that's why I don't recommend the, the road goals. Um, Cal Film, the recorder either needs to have time code as a built-in feature or you would have to purchase a time code recorder and feed that into the left channel of the recorder. That is correct. So if you have like a, um, what is the, it's the Zoom, I think H4N. So say you have like a Zoom H4N Pro then on the left channel, you could use that as like your XLR mic that's running from, you know, your DJ speaker or something like that. Then on the right channel, you're gonna record your time code signal. And so again, though, you have to have a software like DaVinci Resolve that can extract that audio source as time code metadata so that you can benefit from it. Um, in my opinion, it would be a lot better to buy something like a Zoom F6. The F6 is on the pricier side, but I think they came out with some better options last year. Um, I know the Zoom F, or not the F2, the Zoom F3, I think is what it's called. Um, the little baby version of the F6. That actually supports time code, but you have to buy their Bluetooth dongle. So the UltraSync 1 supports, it has a, it's called UltraSync Blue. It looks just like this, but it's like a little blue box. Um, and that's for uh, time code for Bluetooth devices. So you can actually jam sync the Zoom F3 using Bluetooth. But again, I don't like things like that. I, that's like trying to get things to connect via Bluetooth in a run and gun situation is almost asking for something to mess up. I prefer to just plug something in, hardwire it, plug it in from here, plug it into my camera. We're good to go. So, uh, but yes, you technically could do that, record left channel, record right channel, and still uh, extract it inside DaVinci. Um, that's a great idea. Always wanted to get some BTS and never, uh, and never set up for it. Yep, yep. Uh, how do you use time code with the Tascam DR10L or other recorder? So the DR10L doesn't actually support it, but if you have a DR10L, honestly, in 2022, this is the new DR10L. So one thing that I didn't talk about with the Deity is, or I didn't talk a lot about it, was the analog limiter. And again, what that limiter does is it basically prevents. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to see you guys off. So it, it doesn't always prevent uh, clipping. Let me move my face. So 
it reduces the chance of your audio signal from clipping. If you have your gain set correctly uh, and the person gets loud, it'll prevent that from clipping. But if you don't have your gain set right and then it's already too hot and then they get loud, you're just gonna have a distorted signal. So this is why I, I highly recommend, this is a great option, but then you wanna do some research for signal to noise ratio and try to understand like the benefits of that. Basically, you always want your signal to be a lot hotter than your noise floor. Um, a good example, the way that I set the my actual recorder is when I'm in the bridal suite, this is when I set my recorder. I actually set my, my gain levels when it's actually in a noisy environment because typically, you're gonna be in a noisy environment the whole wedding day. So I look here and I have the mic attached to like, you know, the bride or the groom or whoever I'm dealing with. And if my levels are already like halfway through, I lower my gain and then I have them talk. When they talk, it should project because the noise floor is a lot lower, lower which is the background noise. That's gonna be anything we don't care about. But when that person speaks and it's in a loud environment, so they're naturally gonna project their voice, then they should actually peak the audio levels. So that's kind of like my rule for how I said it, but with my mics, I know how my mics work. I've done a lot of tests, and so I pretty much go in and I set them to the same numbers regardless because I know like the sound quality and the pickup. Um, but again, if you're experimenting with this for the first time, that's how I would set the audio levels. Um, cool, I think that's it, man. I think we're, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, let me just make sure there's nothing else on the chat. Um, uh, I don't think I saw this one, but for weddings, I do the same. Justin BBTRX. Yep, I saw that. Uh, does the DD work well with Windows operating system and Premiere Pro? One thing, so one thing people don't talk about with tentacles is there is a slight drift on Windows platform. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that any of that was like a thing. I thought time code was just by itself. Um, I do know that Tentacle has like, they have like a proprietary software that uh, can extract time code like as an audio source. Um, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but I know like I have Windows computers and just like I did on, on this stream here inside DaVinci, all of this is in, you know, on a Windows computer and I don't have any issues, any drift. You should honestly only know this drift if your time code has been running for a long time or like I said, if you're dealing with like, if you're recording audio at 30 frames per second time code and filming in 60, and it's dropping frames, then you'll notice some slight, you know, it won't be a lot, it won't be off by a lot, but you'll notice some slight variances between the longer that you're running the time code, uh, the more that you'll see some variances, so. Um, but that's it, y'all, hope that helped. Uh, what's time code look like in Final Cut Pro X? Carlos, I don't know, man, I couldn't tell you. I, I haven't used Final Cut in a long time. I know it supports it. Um, I would probably, you know, maybe I can reach out to like Daniel Schiffer. I know he does a lot of, um, of Final Cut videos and see if he can get one going just to explain how to use it. Um, but it, it should be very simple as far as like literally just syncing. There should be an option that shows like uh, to auto align your footage. Oh, we need to go to multiple clips. There should be an option that will give you, if I can do this right, there we go based on time code. So auto align Eclipse or sync. I know in, the, in Premiere Pro, it has the exact same uh, options as far as if you're gonna use waveform, that's your traditional sound waveform where you're like actually syncing uh, the audio based on the noise levels, like you're syncing the in-camera audio with your recorder. Uh, but time code is gonna be the accurate where it actually just snaps it based on the time of the clips. Uh, so I would check out, I'm sure, I know that it supports it, I just don't know the steps that uh, it, it requires to do it. So, um, all right, well, I think that's it. I'm going to DaVinci. That's what I'm talking about. Switch to DaVinci. That's going to be the best thing ever. But that's it for this video. I hope this helped y'all. Uh, we're right at an hour. I feel so accomplished because I ended the video on time. I wanted to do one hour, not too much longer, and we did it. We did it. I got all the, all the talking points out. If y'all have any questions, if I left something out, drop them in the comments. Um, I'll just leave y'all with the last little bit and I, that way this can be the end of the video. Remember, if you're gonna jam sync time code, all of the devices have to be set to the same frame rate. So your camera, your recorders, your time code devices, all of them have to be set. Keep in mind that 23,976 and 24 or 29,97 and 30 are not the same frame rates. Make sure your camera is recording at 30 frames per second or 2997, you have to know the differences. If you have your time code set to 30 and your camera set to 2997, you're gonna have some frame drifts 
Um, and it's, it's gonna get even worse the longer that that time code has been running. So make sure all the devices are set to the same frame rate. Uh, and then lastly, if you wanna film in slow motion, like you wanna shoot in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, then you have to set your time code generator. So you have to set this device to a even, um, I guess an a, a even, is it, I, the, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It just has to divide evenly based on the frame rate that you're filming at. So for example, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, then your time code device has to be set to 30 because it's gonna divide evenly into 30. That goes the same for like your cameras if you're filming, uh, if you're filming in 60 frames per second, but your camera's only shooting in 59.94, then you need to set your time code device to 29.97. So you just have to really understand what your camera recording capabilities are, and then you'll be able to set these accordingly. So that's it for time code. Hope this video helped. Again, any questions whatsoever, drop them in the comments down below after this video uploads, or shoot me a message on Instagram. Um, if you wanna dive deeper into this, keep in mind I do offer those one-on-one -on -one mentor sessions. I don't pitch it a lot, but I've had a lot of people uh, reach out recently about the time code and some other things, and. It's pretty dope, man. There's a lot of y'all that's doing some dope stuff out there. So I, I love being able to connect with y'all. I'll have that link in the, in the description as well. And um, until the next video, I'm glad I finally got this one out. Y'all keep creating and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one.